Well, here it is, my new printmaking table. I've designed a new tabletop from recycled materials so I can set up my press and everything in the window at the mini art gallery. So who knows, people could walk by and watch me print. Anyway, to, to inaugurate this new table, I have a letter and a printing plate from my friend in Switzerland named Ek Lori. Ek bought a mini etching press some a year or two ago and we recently because of the virus and the fact that people are shut in and having to improvise on plate making techniques uh, the subject of tetra print plate making came up tetra is a packaging material used for milk and so he made a tetra plate for me to print and uh, when I look at the back of the print it has a what's a Swiss cow, no doubt. Anyway, he sent me the image cut by laser engraving and said, can you print this? And I said, well, you know, this is an opportunity to make a new friend in, by way of printmaking. A uh, press, what would it be called? A printmate, right? Like a pen pal. Uh, so, Eck and I are playing a little game here and we'll be print pals. So, we'll see how it goes over the next day or two as I set up my new printing table. Before I get started, I'll review what I have. X sent me a letter from Switzerland and he included an IRC, International Return for a Stamp, to send back the print when I get it finished. And this is the uh, Tetra plate from a milk carton. You can just see a cow here. And here's the laser engraved image of a tree, one of my favorite themes. And in his letter, he points out, too, that he included this IRC from his, uh, what he calls his uh, times as a publisher of a pen pal mag. Pen pal is the key here because this is print mates now and not a not writing but a printmaking geosocial experience for printmakers. He also includes some technology here. He used a Xylo laser engraving uh, device. Um, and it gives the name of it here that it powered with a 7 watt tube uh, which has a 15 by 15 inch centimeter. Uh, he bought it on eBay, which suggests to me that maybe it doesn't cost very much. So that's what I'll be working with for a printing plate. Uh, he also included a, a button that he'd created using the uh, mini etching press that he bought a couple years ago. Now I'll get my paper ready. I like to use Dutch Van Gelder's own paper. It's no longer manufactured. I'll make a five by seven inch sheet. Five by seven fits nicely into an eight by 10 frame and X plate will fit nicely in that format. When my paper's cut, then I put down a towel and I spray the paper both sides. Then I spray the same number of newsprint sheets plus one. This is for interleaving. I put these in a plastic bag. And I'll put these under weight. Those will settle and an hour or two or the next day they'll be ready to print. I prepared my paper yesterday. Now I'm going to prepare my ink. I'm using an oil-based etching ink. 
made by Charbonnel. There are alternatives to oil-based inks, I understand, non-toxic and so forth. Charbonnel is my favorite etching ink, and I'm going to print the plate in Talio. That's why I'm using an etching ink. It won't take much for such a tiny plate. And because I've never printed a plate like this before, a tetra plate, laser engraved, I don't know how thick to leave my ink, so I'm going to add a drop of burnt plate oil. This will make the ink quite soft. It has to be mixed up thoroughly. Because I'm not going to print today, I need to leave this for a while, maybe even overnight, so that it won't dry out. I'll cover it with a piece of wax paper. That will keep the air off of it until I'm ready to use it. Well, I thought I was about ready to set up the press, and then I ran into kind of a question or a hitch. This Tetra material is so thin, I decided I'd better make a little built up, uh, build up for it. And so I'm going to uh, use a little thin piece of Formica plastic. And uh, when I print, I will put the Tetra plate on top of this plastic. And uh, give it a little bit of a rise so I can get better pressure. Still a lot of unanswered questions with this Tetra material. But first of all, I need to bevel the edges of the plastic so that they don't cause any trouble with the, uh, with the felts. As I said, working with this Tetra material is kind of a special case. However, any time uh, you're using an etching press and you're wanting to use thin material whether it's plastic like this or a metal or something, it, it is helpful to have some sort of a, a way of increasing the pressure. Uh, but you have to watch the edges because if it's plastic or metal, uh, those sharp edges, if you don't bevel them, can actually damage the printing blankets that you use with most etching presses. And so we use a file, in this one I'm just using a little rasp, uh, but we use a file and we sometimes round the corners and uh, make about a oh, 45 or 30 degree angle around the edges. As I said at the beginning, this is my new printing station. It's about one meter square. And uh, looking around, I got my ink ready, my plate is ready, uh, some of my materials. What I'd like to do now is set up the press, get it ready. This is my legacy mini halfwood press that I made in 2004. And uh, I'll set it up with the printing material and so forth before I ink the plate and get it ready. That way I won't have to stop. My method for getting the press ready is to tighten it down all the way then I loosen it back up and feed in the printing blankets. These are typical of most etching presses made today. They have a flat bed and printing uh, wool blankets. I'll just get it started and then tighten it back down. And because the press is small and lightweight, when we made these, we always recommended using a sticky pad to help hold it steady. And that's all I need to do to get the press ready. Okay, it's time to ink and wipe the plate. I prepared my ink 
before it's still soft quite oily and I'll use a sticky pad to help keep my plate the plate that Eckhart sent to me to keep my plate in one place this is tetra packaging material part of a milk carton and I'm inking it to print intaglio the typical method is to have a textured plate and uh, work the ink into the textures and then with the etching press and damp paper to squeeze it back out now the ink is in the texture I wipe it back off and I've had to use some um, innovations here because the plate is so lightweight unlike a metal plate which tends to stay put when you wipe it vigorously in this case it would fly around so I'm using a mat board piece to wipe the ink off the high parts the smooth parts of the plate When I print, I like to put my damp piece of newsprint down and the paper and get it started under the press. And then fold it back up. Hold it down if it will hold down. And then put my plate down, my make ready and the printing plate. Now this is flying around a bit so I'm going to have to hold it steady. One time through would be enough but because I'm making a video I'll roll it back for the benefit of the viewer now before I pull the proof I need to write the moment number that's the the year 20 the month 05 and the day 05 and the time by the clock 24-hour clock is 07.35. And there is the first trial proof. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, demonstration. I'm Bill Ritchie, and thank you and thanks to Eckhart for sending me that Tetra plate to test print. Well, thanks for watching my demonstration about this uh, Print Pal experiment that I'm carrying on with uh, Eckhart. Now I have a couple more things to finish. One is I need to sign and stamp and emboss the PrintPal card. When I finished the other day, I put the print, while it was still damp, in between sheets of newsprint, and I put a weight on it and let that dry several days. So now it's time to sign it. As I'm not the artist, I'm only the printer, so I write IMP.
and then I stamp it with my little rubber stamp that I had made. And then to make it completely official, I emboss it with my embosser. There's no doubt about it that this is an original. Oh, but wait, there's one more thing. I believe that uh, if you watched all of the video uh, that I made for this, you might be interested in trying a crossword puzzle. I made a crossword puzzle using the keywords from the videos. It might be that the uh, crossword puzzle will make the lesson, if you want to call it that, sink in better. So on the screen you'll see a, a, a short URL, what they call a tiny URL, which will take you to an interactive crossword puzzle screen and you can try it out. And uh, well, thanks for watching.